you are welcome at this in this session where I want to discuss about microtomy or what we call section cutting which in the previous videos we have looked at the grossing we have looked at tissue processing now in this video then we looked at embedding so in this video we want to look at section or what we call, call microtomy and microtomy the major significance of microtomy is to ensure cutting of thin sections that can enable microscopy. So here we are going to see cutting sections between 2 to 5 or 2 to 4 micrometers so that we can enable microscopy. And this one is the one that follows after embedding. So if we have embedded tissue, so after embedding it with the paraffin wax, now we want to ensure cutting of thin sections from this embedded tissue for microscopy. And the materials used include microtom machines. And one of the microtom micro machines commonly used is rotary microtom. Rotary microtom is most commonly used. This is routinely used for paraffin. It's routinely used for paraffin sections or paraffin embedded tissues. For us and other types, other types we have locking microtome, we have base sledge, we have freezing microtome for frozen sections. This one is good for frozen sections. And this ultra microtome for it is good in case we want to cut sections for electron microscopy. So this is, these are different types. So in the case we are asked about or to outline different types of microtomes, we have rotary microtome, which is routinely or commonly used. Then we have locking, base sledge, freezing, and ultra microtome. But the most commonly used is rotary. Why? Because it is stable and it enables the cutting of all types of sections. And it is called rotary because we rotate all the the holder, the block holder rotates as you are rotating at an angle of 300. When you have the, the handle, this is the handle. So the handle is moved by the right hand at an angle of 360 degrees as the block on the block holder rotates past or moves past the stationary knife. So we are going to see that this is the structure of the rotary microtome, which have the, it has the handle, it has, it has the body and the knife holder plus the block holder. So the block which is embedded is always placed on the block holder. And the block holder is the one that when we move the handle, it makes the block on the block holder to move past the stationary knife. The knife is always clipped on the stage. This is the stage of the microtome. And this is the knife which is fixed by the clips tightly. So when we move the handle, the block on the block holder moves past the stationary knife. So this is the rough structure of the rotary microtome. And as we are, we are adjusting the knife or when we are fitting the knife on the stage, we, there are terms we use as angle. It is what we call bevel angle. Bevel or you can call it cutting angle or facet angle which is always, the angle is always between 27 degrees to 32 degrees. Whereas the angle of clearance, angle of clearance is always between two to five degrees. So this one is that if I have a block, if this is the block on the block holder, and this is the knife, And this is the knife. So this is the knife. This is the block. The angle of clearance is the one that formed. If I extrapolate a line from the block, this one becomes the angle of clearance, which we are saying it should be between 27 degrees. Whereas the cutting angle, the cutting angle is this. This one becomes the cutting angle. This is the cutting angle. Then this one becomes, or the cutting angle, you can call it the bevel angle. Whereas the angle of clearance is this, which is between 27 to 32 degrees centigrade. 
So when you are fitting the knife on the stage, we have to ensure these angles are achieved. And this block should be parallel. The block should be parallel to the, to the knife. They should be parallel. So those are the precautions you have to ensure before starting microtomy, what you are calling section cutting. Then after looking at the different types of microtom, we can also look at the different types of microtom knives or blade. And among the types, we have what you call plain, plain edge. We have plain edge blade. Then we have another one called, this one is called the plano concave. Plano concave, this one is biconcave. Then this is tour, tour edge. So these are different types of microtom knife or blade, whereby the plain edge and the tool edge, they are used for hard sections, cut hard sections like bones, because they are very rigid and tough. Whereas the plano concave and biconcave being, being not hard or fragile, they are used for soft tissues. For example, Biconcave is used for, self, for cutting soft tissues. So this is the plain edge. The plano concave, why do we call it plano concave? It is curved one side. Then by means two, whereby it is curved two sides. Then the plain edge, which is used for hard tissues. So these are different types of microtom knives. The plain edge, don't mention in your exam, we have the plain edge, we have the plano concave, we have the biconcave, and the tool edge, and these are the ones that we fix on the microtome stage with the clips putting in consideration these angles, the tilt angles. So after looking at different materials used in microtome or section cutting, not forgetting that we shall need an incubator at 60 degrees, we shall need the forceps to always pick the ribbons formed during cutting, then we shall need the water bath for floating out. This water bath will enable floating out. So let us look at the process of microtomy. And the process of microtomy, the first thing to do is you obtain the, the embedded tissue and after obtaining embedded tissue, we come and fit it or we, we insert it on the block holder. So the first thing is you obtain the tissue, embedded the tissue, and fix it on the block holder. That is on the microtop. And where we said the block holder is here. That's where we place it. After placing it on the block holder, the second thing is to fit the microtome knife. You come and put the microtome knife. This microtome knife, as you are fitting it on the stage, Microtom knife on the stage. We have to put into consideration the cutting angle and the clearance, the angle of clearance which we have indicated here. And as we are fitting it, it should be parallel to the block. You have to ensure it is parallel to the block, ensuring the angle of clearance and the cutting angle. And it should be fitted tightly. So after fitting it tightly on the stage, the following thing is you trim. You do what you call trimming. And what is trimming? Trimming is removal of excess wax. During embedding, there is some excess wax which covers the tissue. So here we are going to remove to cut to remove excess of the wax to expose the tissue. So trimming is the removal of excess wax to expose the tissue. Expose the tissue. So here we are removing excess wax to expose the tissue. After trimming and the trimming, it is always the size is set. You set the size between 10 to 40 micrometers. This is the 
So before you start trimming, you set the micro tom at this size. Many of many people consider 15 or 20, depending on your lab. So, but the size should be between 10 to 40. And during the trimming, this one enables the block holder to move in front towards the stationary knife, and we begin removing excess of the wax. After trimming, the next thing we do is that you remove. Because during trimming, you make this surface to become heat, to heat up. And there is no consistency between the paraffin wax and the tissue. So the first thing is after trimming, you remove it from the holder. You remove it from the block holder. And you put the trimmed embedded tissue on the cold, in the cold ice for like at least 10 minutes to enable cooling. This step is optional, but it enables easy sections or to obtain good ribbons after you have cooled it at least for 10 minutes after trimming. Then after being, after cooling it on the cold ice, you bring it back and fit it on the holder, on the block holder, and you, you adjust. Now we are ready for section cutting. So after bringing it back on the holder, we adjust the size, the, the cutting size. Remember here the cutting size we had set at 10, between 10 to 40 micrometer, but the section cutting size is between two to four. So you adjust the size from this then to two to four to enable cutting of thin sections. This one we enable to obtain thin sections which are cut between two to four micrometers. Between two, so don't forget these measurements. It's between two to four, but the trimming is between 10 to 40. So after you have adjusted and you have made sure the knife is parallel with the block and you have ensured the angle of clearance and the angle, the angle of clearance and the angle of cutting angle, what we call bevel angle, then we have ensured that even the knife is tightly clipped on the stage. Now you hold your, you use your right hand to hold the handle, then the right, the left hand holding the forceps, and as you are cutting the sections, you keep holding the ribbons using the forceps to avoid them accumulating on the stage. So after cutting sections, as you're moving them using the holder, this, the cut sections are transferred to the water bath. They transfer the cut sections to the water bath. This water bath maintained at temperature five to six below the melting point of paraffin. That is majorly core used is 45 degrees centigrade. So this water in the water bath, and this water bath is always painted black. To ensure visibility, then the water bath is maintained at this temperature. And this process of bringing the cut ribbons to the water bath is to enable the ribbons formed might be curved or have folds. For example, we obtained such a ribbon. This was the ribbon obtained with, this was ribbon. So this ribbon has some curves and folds and it is straightened by bringing it to the water bath. So we do it to straighten the ribbon. And this process of putting the ribbon into the water bath is what we know as floating out. This process is called floating out. So the major significance of floating out is to straighten or to remove any wrinkles or folds within the ribbon. This is the ribbon. And this ribbon, after placing it in the water bath or floating out, we come, we use the forceps and we begin cutting these different sections in the ribbon. After this, we shall obtain a slide, a microscope slide. We press it in the water bath in a vertical position. Why do we press it vertically is to mount these sections on the slide. After cutting into different sections of the ribbon, we use a slide, the microscope slide, and we mount them on the slide. And after mounting, 
you have to blot to remove excess water. You blot to remove excess water, which might have been picked during mounting. And after mounting this section on the slide, sometimes in the water bath, we add adhesive materials. We add some adhesive material. The adhesive material is either smeared on the slide or added in the water bath. So we use adhesive materials. And among the adhesive materials used is like albumin. We can use glycerol. And sometimes glycerol is used in combination with albumin. Then we can also use cellulose. This one is enable farm attachment. The enable farm attachment of the section on the slide. So after the section has been firmly attached using the adhesive material on the slide, the next step is to go and melt the wax, which was in the section. So we take this slide with the tissue to the intubator. We take it to the intubator, maintain that 60 degrees, and it is better to overheat than underheating. Why are we heating is to melt the wax so that the tissue remains without any wax. So that's why we take the intubator and it takes like 30 to 60 minutes. And this heating is to enable melting of the wax which was added during embedding. So this is the process we do. And every time you want to trim different, different embedded tissues, you have to clean the stage to prevent cross-contamination. So the stage should be cleaned every time after sectioning. So this is the process of microtomy. After looking at this, the last thing we can look at is how we care for the knives. These knives which are always stationed on the stage, in the case they have become blunt, what do we do? When the knives are blunt, it is what we call honing and stropping. Whereby there are these two terminologies known as honing and stropping. Whereby honing is known as sharpening. Whenever the knife becomes blunt, it is honed using different honing stones like Arkansas, like Beridian black or yellow. Or we use many other stones which are used for sharpening the edges of the knife. And the process of sharpening is known as honing. Then stropping is polishing. After you have sharpened, there are some remains of the particles that remain on the blade surface or the cutting surface. So they are polished. And that process of polishing is known as stropping. And lastly, if this is a microtome knife, we have a microtome knife like this, and this is the this is our microtome knife, and this is the cutting surface, and this is the, this is the handle. The angle formed near the handle is known as the heel, and the angle formed away from the handle is known as a toe. So, but this is our micro this is a microtome knife with the heel near the handle and the toe away from the handle. So this is what we can discuss during this session. So whenever the knife becomes blunt or it is has niches, we can always hold using different honing knives. Thank you so much for learning with us. May God bless you.